because the t- well, because it doesn't know how it works. But the guys, you know, these friends says, what does a fucking PhD know about Shakespeare? Do you think Shakespeare is sexy? Um, like the way he writes or the way he writes? So what do you think about when you hear the word Shakespeare? When every single English class in America reads a Shakespeare play at least once in their high school career. Any Shakespeare plays in high school or anything? No. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We're deep Shakespeare songs. We're supposed to write those things. Interpreter the sexy, but not exactly my style. Hmm, I think about plays. Just plays? Any particular plays? Uh, well, and I mean, I love English people, so he, that's not the plus for him. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, concern how many sexual undertones are in like all the most of his plays. I'd say yeah. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, uh, love is uh, a story everyone can relate to, um, you know, good storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think what's funny about Shakespeare is that we always talk about how he's a master of character. I mean, there's that whole book that he invented the human, and the whole point of being a human is that we desire and we are never complete. And so a always lot of... Satisfied. yeah. Exactly. So a lot of this, a lot of character development and a lot of conflict comes from the desire for completion. Mm-hmm. And people think that they can often achieve that through power. Um, getting back to that again. Quite clear. So the ways in which Shakespeare's plays still have the power to address us in the present. Um, that we don't simply encounter them as sort of strange relics from uh, a bygone age. Yeah, okay. Um, when I think of Shakespeare, I think um, oh, Romeo. Yeah, we're from Arthur Romeo. Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a captain. Like Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself that I'm not to you. Romeo and Juliet were in love or simply lusting after each other? And do you think there's a difference between the two? Um, where it, the, the woman is typically put on a pedestal and that they don't really know each other very much mm-hmm. and she's just very idealized and it's not very realistic and in that sense... Um, like, I think that Romeo screwed it all up. Do you think their love was driven more by lust or by love? In those types of love that when the person who is infatuated or has that kind of love towards somebody who they're idealizing it usually says more about the person than it does than it, the person who's in love or infatuated than it does about the actual object of affection. Based of your own life for that person, you have to love them. It has to be a true love. I think there's definitely a difference between love and lust, but I think their love is definitely very passionate. Um, at the same time as being innocent. They don't know much about that person, mm-hmm. so they're kind of projecting their own fantasies and ideals and things like that on the person. You usually end up being disappointed. Um, we never get to find that out. Montague, is it not hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face? Could be some other part belonging to a man. What's in a name? That which we would call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. So Romeo would retain that dear perception to which he owes without that title. O oh, Romeo, adopt thy title and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. It's innocent insofar as it is youthful, as it is beautiful, and as it seems to be spontaneous and unstoppable. And so Romeo and Juliet give us the terms and the language for understanding the nature of an overwhelming romantic love. My name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to me because it is an enemy to you. If I had it written down, I would tear at the word. Mary said not yet drunk a hundred words with thy tongue seven, yet I know the sound. Is that not Romeo and the Montague? Neither fair maid, if either thee dislike. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of thy tongue fluttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo? And a Montague? I have night's cloak to hide me from the rise, and 
but for thy love, let them find me here. I'd rather be killed by their hate than left alive wanting for thy love. By whose direction found thou out this place? By love that first did prompt me to inquire, that I lent him mine eyes, and I should go and seek this merchandise. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I now, take thee at thy word. Yet if thou swearest thou mayst prove false, they say at lovers' perjuries Jove laughs. O gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. By yonder blessed moon I vow that tips with silver all the fruit tree tops. Lest that thy love be likewise banished. What shall I swear by? Well, do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I believe thee. But if my heart's dear love... Do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too sudden, too unadvised. Too like the lightning, which doth cease to be, ere one can say it lightens. Be good night. This bud of love, by summer's ripening breath, may prove to be a beauteous flower of one next we meet. Good night, good night. As sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, blessed, blessed night, I am a feared being in night, this is but a dream. Three words, gentle Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable and thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform thy right, and my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. A thousand times the worse to want thy life. The way in which we've been taught to read Romeo and Juliet, we desperately want to believe that it's a play about true love, whatever true love might be, and that true love is, whatever it might be, something completely different from, from lust. And we've been so conditioned to regard lust as something base, uh, fraudulent, uh, even disgusting, at uh, the furthest extreme sinful, that uh, it's almost as if we need lust to be all these things in order to justify, by contrast, a certain vision of true life. When we look closely at Romeo and Juliet, though, it becomes increasingly difficult to maintain the distinction, absolutely, between true love and lust. 